Professor Dave and Chegg here. Two reaction classes that come up over and over again in organic chemistry are oxidation and reduction. We probably remember these terms from general chemistry, where they implied electron transfer. In organic chemistry, these words will take on a slightly different connotation, so let's see what that will be. From now on, we will think of an oxidation as a reaction that increases the number of bonds to oxygen that an atom is participating in, and a reduction as a reaction that decreases the number of bonds to oxygen, and typically increases the number of bonds to hydrogen that an atom is participating in. Here is a series of functional groups, from alkane to alcohol to aldehyde to carboxylic acid. As we move to the right, going from zero bonds to oxygen to one, to two, to three, we are performing successive oxidation reactions of one kind or another, and this is represented in a generic way by this letter O in brackets. Moving to the left, from three back to zero, we are performing successive reduction reactions, and this is represented generically with this letter H in brackets. So when we see these symbols, we are referring to oxidation or reduction in a general way, and we must learn about various oxidizing and reducing agents that will perform specific transformations. Some oxidizing agents transform alcohols into aldehydes. Some transform alcohols into carboxylic acids. Some reducing agents transform carboxylic acids into alcohols. Some transform aldehydes into alkanes. Each of these reagents operates by a completely different mechanism, but we can always refer to these reactions as oxidations and reductions because of the definitions of these words. Let's examine a few common oxidizing agents that we will see over and over again so that we know precisely what they do. We should first note that when oxidizing alcohols, which will be extremely common, we can only oxidize primary or secondary alcohols. Primary alcohols can go to the aldehyde or carboxylic acid, depending on the reagent. Secondary alcohols can go to the ketone, no matter what reagent is used. And tertiary alcohols can't be oxidized. This is because, with only a few exceptions, we typically will not be breaking carbon-carbon bonds when oxidizing, and a tertiary carbon has no room for more bonds to oxygen beyond the one it already has. Now let's look at some specific reagents. The first one is pyridinium chlorochromate, or PCC. When using this with a primary alcohol, this will stop at the aldehyde, with only two bonds to oxygen. So we can consider this a soft oxidizing agent, in that it doesn't oxidize to the extent that some other reagents do. This is in contrast with hard oxidizing agents, like potassium permanganate, chromic acid, or Jones's reagent, which each oxidize a primary alcohol all the way to the carboxylic acid, which involves three bonds to oxygen. As we said, a secondary alcohol will be oxidized to the ketone when using any of these oxidizing agents, as in this context, these will not have the ability to break carbon-carbon bonds. Now let's check out a few reducing agents. Most of the reducing agents we will see are sources of hydride, or H-. This is a hydrogen atom with a pair of electrons instead of just one, so this will act as a nucleophile, allowing it to attack a partially positive carbonyl carbon. First we will look at sodium borohydride. This is a soft reducing agent in that it can only reduce aldehydes and ketones, taking them to the primary alcohol and secondary alcohol respectively. It will not be able to reduce carboxylic acids or esters. By contrast, lithium aluminum hydride, sometimes abbreviated as LAH, is a hard reducing agent. It will be able to reduce aldehydes, carboxylic acids, and esters down to the primary alcohol, as well as ketones down to the secondary alcohol. We should note that sodium borohydride can safely react in protic solvents like ethanol, whereas lithium aluminum hydride, being more reactive, will require an aprotic solvent such as diethyl ether so as to avoid an acid-base reaction. With this reagent, because of the aprotic environment, once a compound is reduced, it will leave an oxyanion, and acidic workup with something like ammonium chloride is required to provide the proton necessary to get the desired product. 
To understand the discrepancy in reducing ability, let's look at the structure of these reagents. For sodium borohydride, we have the borohydride, which is BH4-, so the boron atom has a formal negative charge, because it has only three valence electrons, but is contributing four to this structure. Then there is the sodium counterion, which will coordinate to the carbonyl oxygen, giving it a slight partial positive charge, which withdraws some of the electron density in this double bond towards the oxygen, which increases the electrophilicity of the carbonyl carbon. Let's compare that with lithium aluminum hydride, which is similar, just with an aluminum atom in here instead of boron, which is negatively charged for the same reasons, and a lithium counterion instead of sodium. So there are two things to note. First of all, lithium is a smaller ion than sodium, which means it is a better Lewis acid, so it will make a stronger interaction with the oxygen, which results in greater electrophilicity for this carbonyl carbon. This makes it much more susceptible to nucleophilic attack by a hydride. Then second, we have to understand that when a hydride leaves this complex, it involves a hydrogen atom leaving with the electrons in this bond, which neutralizes the central atom. Since aluminum is less electronegative than boron, being in the period below, it is holding on to those hydrogen atoms less tightly, so the hydrides are more readily available for nucleophilic attack. These two trends combine to make lithium aluminum hydride a much stronger reducing agent than sodium borohydride, and so we would have to strategically select one of these reducing agents over the other, depending on precisely what transformation we are attempting to induce. So that covers the concepts of oxidation and reduction as they pertain to organic chemistry, as well as a handful of the most common oxidizing and reducing agents, and the transformations they induce. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.